Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about dry. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what are some situations when the don't repeat yourself rule should not be followed? Whenever there is no correlation or no, no real correlation between the things that you are trying to abstract or like to make them when you're trying to make things uh, well, when you're trying to make things dry that sounds fluffy but let me explain so there is something that I call circumstantial correlation and actual correlation circumstantial correlation is when a person goes into the code and finds that two pieces of information let's say an email as an example well, there's an email in two different places where one is for, I don't know, external communication email and internal uh, communication email. And you find that that's, there's a string, a hard-coded string in both places, and it's the same string. Now, a beginner-level programmer or like a naive programmer would say, all right, th this is not very dry because you're, com you're duplicating that string in two places. But the argument that I make here is that this is circumstantial duplication. And that basically because the the code, the surrounding code, like those these are two values. One is for internal communication and one is for external communication. Now if you think about the semantics of that, right now that is the same email. But it doesn't actually mean that that's always going to stay true, now does it? Because if for any reason we decide that here, you know what, we're going to use a slightly different handle on the external communication. Well, then this is no longer a question of being dry, then it's actually two completely different values. So, this is a very trivial example of that concept, but I hope that that makes sense. These two things are actually not linked in any real way, they're just by pure coincidence linked right now but they are long term like semantically not actually linked which is a very bad situation to be dry because you are going to start tying because it's basically is what uh, dry means you're going to start creating abstractions uh, on things that may right now change together but the second they stop changing together which is always a risk it's actually is you you're going to put the next person in a situation where they're going to have to decide now to create a generic solution that fits both cases or to do the thing that most developers never do because they just uh, you know, most developers are not um, usually so good at backtracking on a decision in code and rewriting things in a way that is more structured and like better they're just going to continue adding on it because it's the least amount of work that they can do and that's how shim programming starts and that is where legacy and all that comes from because when you put them in a situation where you created this nice generic abstraction for these two different cases and then one case change uh, what's going to happen is that they're instead of just removing that abstraction and just duplicating it into, into places or like changing it slightly, they're going to try to fit both use cases into the abstraction, and which makes the overall solution worse. It makes the case like one of the cases are going is going to get its new functionality, but the overall experience and for the case that is no longer like the same, well, it's going to be worse and it usually manifests itself when you start getting a lot of these conditional booleans that are sometimes there, values that are optional, sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not there. When you start seeing a pattern that more and more optional stuff is coming into your function or whatever you're doing so that you can cater for these two different variations, you found a situation where dry was probably not the way to go. Here it's better for you to just separate the two and just accept that well, maybe some of the, you know, you just kind of, you know, scratch it and start from, uh, start over, like duplicate the two pieces of logic or the abstractions into two pieces so that they are specific for the use cases and perfectly fit those two use cases and see what you're left with. Because when you've, when the dust settles, you will see that, okay, now you have a perfect abstraction for case number one and one for case number two and sure they have a lot of similarities but unless those similarities can be once again abstracted into something that actually is related 
and not just circumstantial relation, well, then it makes sense to to do the dry thing again. And then there are situations. My what my my favorite one. It's actually something I had a conversation with my coworker about that the other day, which is when the dry principle actually hurts the code. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, the dry principle's intention is to reduce waste and reduce bugs. The reason why that is the intention is because being dry basically means this, as I said, if you change something in one place and you are 100% certain that this other place over here should always change together with the first place, well, then if you change in one place but not in the other place, you're going to get a bug because you forgot to change in place number two. So that's a very good situation where creating an abstraction that you then you always know whenever you change something, hey, you're always going to be safe because it's the intended behavior. But when you, on the other hand, create a situation where if you change in one place and you don't want it to change in another place necessarily, then that's a very b bad situation because if you make the change, well, then it's going to change everything else. And that might not be what you want. An example would be where I was, as I said, I talked to my coworker, and we were discussing uh, the dry principle related to testing, unit testing. And so I made the. Uh, we, he said to me this uh, very nice thing. He said, uh, "Frederick, uh, we have a lot of these tests that just assert that uh, these because we had a bunch of these very generic network calls, uh, like we made a bunch of REST clients, right?" And he said, well, in every, all of these clients, we're doing the same test. We're checking that the network call is happening. We're checking that, you know, it throws an error and the status code is correct. And we're doing all of this stuff that is sort of like, I mean, it's standard HTTP communication type of stuff, right? And we're doing that in every single test over and over and over. Would it not be much easier for us to just create like a super class type of thing that just tests that in one place and then everything else is like, you know, you don't... Uh, have to do all this duplication because it's not very dry to write the same test for all of these clients over and over and over and I and basically I answer him and say well if you think about what the intention of the dry principle is and you think about what the intention of the co or of these tests is and you compare the value of being dry here versus the value of not being dry because if we do the thing that you are suggesting we're going to put ourselves in a situation where we create a super class of super uh, uh, something like that that holds all the logic for how we do network communication and then according to you what we're going to do is that we're going to be able to throw away all of these uh, as that all these tests that like checks the same thing on each of these different rest clients and put them on the single client now the problem there is that that means that if I change the interface of my REST clients, this superclass, if I change the superclass, everything else changes with it, which is a risk in of itself, because maybe that's why these are, I usually always suggest to people to never, ever, ever create like a single a standard REST client for all different all day all the data sources. Just create like one for each, because APIs change, and the if you do it incorrectly, you might have find yourself in a situation where you create this problem, as I was said, that you're being dry now, but you're actually cascading a lot of problems, and it's the same problem with a too long inheritance, where you're trying to abstract things, and you actually find that this abstraction was really bad, and it's only true for some subclasses, and for some it's not, and all of a sudden you're in this override hell where you're trying to override things or optionals and so forth, because you can't get out of it. So that is one part. The tests themselves, they are actually testing the actual concrete interface, the actual REST client that is doing the call. And what you're suggesting is to remove all that security that n where it does not matter if the internal functioning of our REST client changes. Because we have a test for each REST client that makes sure that that specific client is doing exactly the thing that we want. And sure, it takes a little bit longer for us to, and we are not very dry, but at the very least, if we change the implementation of that superclass, as an example, well, we don't have it, then we have to just make sure that, you know, if we add another client and we forget to impl implement it the way that you have suggested, well, 
then we just have to hope that the person uh, that uh, it still works because the tests are n the test that you are suggesting the optimized version that you are talking about will only test the superclass it won't test actually the actual client itself which is what you want because it the the uh, the fact that there's a superclass is just as it's a formality it's a formality implementation the thing that is interesting is the thing that i'm consuming as the caller of the rest client is the rest client, not the internal mechanism, and that's the black box uh, principle incidentally, where you write, in this scenario, writing a test that doesn't know how the internal client works is the way to go, because I'm not interested in testing and like, making my, myself, making it easier for me to write a test. I am trying to make sure that the code is always working. And when in this situation it's actually very cheap because these as you said the tests are almost identical so the cost of copy pasting these tests and just changing a few parameters so that you have a dupe, almost an almost identical test is actually very low because there is no risk of changing uh, like the change is almost identical it's almost always copy paste so it doesn't take me a lot of time to change it or create a new one or like re it's not like I have to sit there and type a hundred lines of code it takes like two seconds to do it and the only reason you want to do apply the, re the drive principle here is because your mental gremlins are telling you to do it when the thing that you should be considering is not oh this should be dry because there is a rule that it is, you should be dry as a software developer you should be thinking of the impact of being dry versus not being dry why are you trying to be dry that's what's interesting. So what I want you to take away from this is that there are many situations where the don't repeat yourself rules should not be followed. My two favorite ones is, as I said, number one, never be dry when this one thing is not always true. If something always changes with something else, you can create an abstraction because then there is a correlation between those two things if it's circumstantial, if it just happens for the moment to be the same thing, such as two emails, internal, external, or some string or something like that, don't connect them, because there's no point. It's the same thing with logic. Just because they seem to be almost identical, you have to really think about, are these two things always going to change together? Because if they're not, then you're basically going to create a situation where you might create a really shitty abstraction, and that is a lot more dangerous than duplication. Bad abstractions are a much, much bigger problem than having to copy-paste code once or twice. And then the other situation is, as I said, when the following the dry principle actually makes the end result worse. And that is a good rule to follow in general. Never, ever, guys, ever listen to someone who says we should do A, B, and C because it's standard. You know, it's a good practice if you can very determine, very clearly show that the end result will actually be worse. Because at the end of the day, guys, the only thing that matters the only real rule of software development is that the code should always be maintainable, it should always work, and you, you, it should, you should be possible to, uh, to, uh, to sh make changes and all that good stuff without you know, causing bugs. These are the things that matter. And most of these standard practices, principles and so forth, they are just different people who figured out certain good rules to follow and guidelines so that these things are true. But if the system's functionality and end result suffers because of a rule, then it's not a good rule to follow. Have a great day.